vessel now. And this morning when I woke up, the Lord says, Sean, I want you to post it online. And I was like, oh, Lord, that's special. And my heart was beating real fast. But because what I'm about to share, I am going to empower and encourage women that um, exactly who they are, women and men alike, exactly who they are is exactly whom the Father has created you to be. So just do you. Okay? So I have a couple of verses that uh, if anybody's taken notes, grab a note paper. And I'm going to sing a song. What song am I going to sing? I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. Okay, that gave everybody time to get their notepad. Okay, here's some verses in case you want to write them down. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse 1. All of Romans 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 19 through 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Um, and 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. And Matthew 11, 28 through 29. This is one of my favorite verses. The first one I mentioned is because it says, My brethren, when I came to you, I did not come with, um, with superior wisdom or eloquence of speech. On the contrary, I came to you with much fear and trepidation so that your faith would rely upon God's power and not upon man's wisdom. Your, that people's faith would rely upon God's power, not upon man's women, man's wisdom. And we can even take it up a notch further. The word of God says, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts, declares the Lord. So to help us all keep in check with what it is that the Lord is calling and veering us to do, is it something that promotes self or is it something that promotes allowing the love of the Lord to flow through someone out to another? Okay, so now I'm going to read chapter, uh, Romans chapter 15. And all of us have to do ourselves. And so for me, reading the fullness of a text, that has ministered to me. So you, and then each person, as they view Romans 15, they will see different things that the Holy Spirit pulls out of the living and grafted Word of God and etches it on their heart for this moment right now. When we think of now, like right now, um, in the Bible, the word Eden is actually a cheap word that has been chosen to be used, and I'm not dissing on the Word of God, but Eden in Hebrew actually means it's five strokes of Hebrew, and it means spot, moment, open door, access, and presence, or like now. So like an open portal is Eden, an open portal meaning that the Lord is spirit, and he wants to bless his people in their inner man. Okay, so let me jet over to Romans 15. Actually, before I read Romans 15, I want to share something. 
So this past summer, I had the opportunity to go to North Carolina. And when I was in North Carolina, because I'm an intercessor, just meaning I, the Lord's given me a heart. Who he's created this human being, Sean, to be? He's given me a heart to pray for people, okay? Some people were created to, let's create fun in different environments. And my brain just goes into a room, and I focus on what's going on amongst all the different people. And then I walk away with what some would call a burden, but to an intercessor, it's not a burden. It's like you're gathering all these little gifts and treasures, and then when you go throughout your day or your week, you're able to pray for people, okay? So when I was in North Carolina, I connected with some different um, intercessors that were in that vicinity. And I had, on a Thursday afternoon, I was in my son's backyard, and as I began to pray, um, all of a sudden, in the spiritual realm, I saw something. I saw what looked like an atomic bomb coming down and then I saw the wave or the cloud going out like this and the Lord in my mind I didn't hear an audible voice but in my mind I heard this is new souls coming into the kingdom of God and I was in awe at what the Lord showed me then the next day on Friday is when I met with a fellow intercessor and when her and I were praying I saw something else I saw this ginormous like commercial car wash and I was like Lord what is this and the thought came to me that this car wash is for people who were in the body of Christ or let's break it down another way Christians or we could break it down another way who are already um, heaven bound okay the car wash is for these people and the reason the car wash is needed is to remove our judgments that we have towards those people who have not come to the saving knowledge of Christ first. So the Lord shows me the waves of new believers coming into the kingdom of God. Then he shows me we need to get our minds out of the gutter and cleanse our minds so that we don't judge people. Then on Sunday, before I went to, before I went to church with my grandson, I had gone to Walmart. And when I went to Walmart, um, I had walked by this woman and as soon as I walked by, or as soon as I walked by, it was like a stop. And then I literally took four steps back like this, and I shared with this woman. So here she was in her short hair, and she had her yellow vest on at Walmart. And I don't even remember her name. But I said to her, I need to share with you a word that I heard in my home in Portland, Oregon, the second Tuesday in May. This is what I heard. The reason women mankind have been filled with the word of God to the degree in which they have is because the Holy Spirit is about to pour out on man mankind. Women mankind are going to become a source of backbone strength, thus encouraging men mankind that they are indeed hearing directly from the throne of God. So as I, after when I was saying this to her, she was a sister sister from North Carolina. And she was like, oh, girl, no, you didn't just say that to me. Oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't just say that to me up in this store, right? And then she shared with me. She goes, let me tell you about a dream that I just had. She said, I had a dream last night that this woman, this pregnant woman came up in my store. And she was so pregnant. And when she was up in my store, all of a sudden she went into labor and she had the baby. She had the baby like on a conveyor belt and the baby was so huge and the baby had stuff like all nasty stuff all over it. And, and I looked up at the woman and I looked at the baby and I looked at the woman again like she was tripping like, oh no, you're not. I know you're not going to leave the baby looking like that. Well, as soon as this woman shared this dream with me, it made me think that this baby was symbolic for all the new people that are going to come into the kingdom of God. But the word of God says, God does not look upon man as man does. For man looks upon the outward appearance, but God looks upon the heart. Those who are already blood bought by Jesus are already kingdom heavenly bound. God looks at you and he loves you, but God looks at those people who do not know Jesus as Savior yet the same. Because he sees the heart. Mankind was created in the image of God. So we 
as believers who are already following King Jesus, we must let our minds and our brains go through this supernatural car wash to cleanse us of judgment. When new believers come into the kingdom of God, it is not our place to go through their lives and point into their lives what they need to do and what they don't need to do. The word of God, which cannot lie, says, and he, the Holy Spirit, will guide you in all understanding. It says, being confident of this, that he who has begun a good work in you, will complete it until the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Us, as the body of Christ, are called to love. Love. Because the word of God says, love covers over a multitude of sin. And allow the Holy Spirit to to nourish and grow all these new babies that have all this special stuff on them. Well, how could you expect there not to be special stuff on them? Because these are people who have wandered around the earth apart from having the spirit of the living God inside of them, which is the Holy Spirit. Be cautious, body of Christ, to put on love garments. Put on love garments. So that we can be a conduit of love for all the new people that are going to come in the kingdom of God. So now we're going to read Romans 15. So it says, We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of those who are weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please his neighbor for his good. To build him up. For even Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. So that through endurance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of unity amongst yourself as you follow Christ. So with one heart and mouth, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. For I tell you, that Christ has become a servant on the Jews' behalf of God's truth to confirm the promises made to the patriarchs so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, Therefore I praise you, God, among the Gentiles. I will sing hymns to your name. Again it says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. Again, praise the Lord, all you Gentiles, and sing praises, all you people. And again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, the one who, arise, who will arise to rule over nations. The Gentiles will hope in him. May the God of all hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The last verse is really powerful. That you may overflow by the power of the Holy Spirit. When one person, pause, the word says, Jesus is speaking, Behold, I stand at the door and knock right now. Even though we're in this human moment, God is not in human time. It says he is he who was and is and is to come. It says God is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And besides him, there is no other God. The word of God, which cannot lie, says, Though your sins be like scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Right now, the word says it is not my will that none should perish, but that all should have eternal life. So right now, it, it even says, um, um, no man comes unto the Father unless the Spirit draws him. 
So in this human moment right now, whether it's in real time or it's replayed back time or 10 years down the line from now time, it says, Jesus speaking, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Right now, Jesus is knocking on hearts saying, let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. All we as humans have to do is open that door. I don't know why. I was not consciously pursuing the Lord, but at 16, I was taken to this church in Tacoma, Washington, and I was standing amongst these people. And on that day, uh, 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 this one, two, three things happened, and I had opened that door to my heart. And the only thing I knew is when I was 16 and I got back in that car, it was, it was, it was in October. When I was in that car, I knew that I had never felt more beautiful in my entire life. And here I am, that 16, and now here I am, 50. Nothing, 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 nothing can touch me like the beauty of the Lord. Beauty of the Lord. I only have one tattoo. My tattoo right here says Jesus, and on the bottom says L-O-M-S, which stands for lover of my soul. Women, there is this beautiful, pure, pure space of intimacy that the Lord is saying, come, come here. I want to love on you. Come here. Lord knows that women cannot explain themselves. You put hormones in there. You put life situations in there. We cannot explain ourselves. But the Lord is saying, come here, come here, let me love on you. But if we have barricades on our heart, like, so my dad grew up in the hood in Chicago, okay? So if we have barricades on our heart where the top, the top bolt is locked, the middle bolt, this bolt is locked, and 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 we're like, no, no, you ain't coming in this space, Lord then he can't come in because he is a gentle, pure, pure lover of your soul. The power of the Holy Spirit. The last verse in Romans chapter 15. When you open that door, or if you've already opened that door, walking with King Jesus is not a self-improvement project. It is not a self-improvement project. It is not just have faith. It is not let's do acts of kindness. It is not let's walk off, walk out, let's um and, and, and just be just be mindful of things. No. We were created in the image of the living eternal God. He knows us. I would encourage, I would strongly encourage anyone, if you've never read it, to read Psalms chapter 139. Psalms chapter 139. He knows us. He knows us. Now let's go back to the word. Okay. One of my one of my Sunday school teachers. Um, shared something really powerful with me, and I'd never heard it. At 50, I'm sure other people have heard it, but I had never heard this. And he said, um, TEAM, T-E-A-M, he gave an acronym for TEAM, T-E-A-M. So T is together, E is everyone, A is achieves, and M is more. So team actually means together, everyone achieves more. God did not intend for us to be alone. If we go back to Genesis, um, where it says, let us create man in our image. Then he created man. And then he said, it's not good that man should be alone. So he knocked Adam out cold and then took a rib out of Adam and then created Eve. We are not intended to be these lone soldiers who, well, I'm just going to do God all by myself. I'm just going to do God all by myself. Oh, I don't, I don't need any of that church stuff. I don't need those other people. I'm just going to do God all by myself. He did not create us to do that. He didn't. 
let's think of this for a second. If you were one of the little briquettes, and you were, you, you had a group of the little briquettes down in a barbecue, and you lit, you know, put down the, the light or whatever that liquid stuff is, right? And then you lit it up. If you take that little briquette and you put it over here by itself, like in the wilderness by himself, of course not the dry wilderness, but in the wilderness by himself, that little briquette's not going to stay hot very long. It is important that we are around other people who are also, who also have a heart that desires to walk out allowing the Lord to flow in love through their being. There is so much tension right now in the world. There's tension. You name the realm, and there's tension in the world right now. But that is, not, that is not what God would have his created human beings function and operate in. The tension that is going on. He wants us to come together so that we can strengthen one another and we can encourage one another. Okay? So God has not call, called us to be super Sally Christians, thinking we have everything figured out all on our own. He truly doesn't want us to be negative Nancys. And he doesn't want us to be, this is a new one he gave me today, non-negotiable Naomi's. <laughs> non-negotiable Naomi's. So we're not called to be super Sally Christians. We're not called to be negative Nancys. And he doesn't want us to be non-negotiable Naomi's. And if, and if any of those are your names, please forgive me. My brain thinks in humor. And nine out of ten times, the humor is just to make me laugh. And if anybody laughs, that's fine. Okay. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Starting at verse 19. So just think of, for the, anybody, anybody on earth, you're not meant to be a lone star, okay? So starting at verse uh, 19, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, starting at verse 19. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like the Jews to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I myself am free from God's law, am not free from God's law, I am under Christ's law. So as to win those having the law, to the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this all for the sake of the gospel that I may share in its blessings. So let's go back to Super Sally Christian. If we're Super Sally Christian and we think that we are above or better than other people, how are we going to love on people? Okay, so today I'm sporting this shirt purposefully. Because last weekend, my husband and I were at the Saturday market, and we met this young man. This young man who is walking out. The word says that if we're created in his image, then we're created to be creative. So listen to this role, okay? If we're created in his image, we're created to be creative. Therefore, we have a creative desire to want to create, okay? So within this last month, the Lord showed me a visual. So let's think of the human reproductive system. Here's an egg, and here's the father seed. So if this egg stays closed, the father's seed cannot get into the egg. Okay? But if the egg, if the father's seed, if the egg opens up or is able to be opened up, then the father's seed goes into the egg. And as soon as this seed enters the egg, in a nanosecond, combustive creation starts to take place. Okay, so then the Lord showed me this. Our brains are like the egg. The Father sends down thoughts, creative thoughts. Okay, even our brother who did Facebook, 
He opened his mind with a creative thought. Okay? People who do who, who develop the internet, this human opened their mind to a creative thought. So whatever God is laying on anyone's heart, whatever he's putting on. Now, I'm not saying negative thoughts. I'm not saying like corrupt, let's, oh, God created me to walk in this corrupt way. No, because that's contrary to let us create man in our image. Okay? But if you would open up your mind to the thought, then, then you can walk it out. Okay? So I just lost my train of thought. Wait, I didn't lose my train of thought. Let me go back to what I was saying. Just the fact that, Lord, anoint my mind, anoint my lips. Where do you want me to go with this? He loves us. We can be like little kids walking on earth every day. We can get up in the morning and say, okay, Lord, I want to partner with your thoughts today. Lord, I want to partner with your thoughts. There are so many people who do not know the goodness of the Lord. But if we stay in these little, oh, the guy, the guy who did the t-shirts, that's where I was going with it. So here he was, a thought was placed into his mind to develop this t-shirt, 50 tree. We're in the Pacific Northwest, 50 tree, because the, the area code can be used for, oh, that's where that person's from. And so my husband and I commended this young man on it. And then not only that, but this young man allowed us to pray over him, but just blessings. Now, if I would have been stuck in a super Sally Christian mode, then I could have looked at the appearance of this guy. I could have thought A, B, C, and D because his shirts didn't say JC, you know, for Jesus Christ and could have just missed out on an opportunity to love on someone. But instead I was just, you know, the opportunity was there to just Pour love over this young man. So whatever God's calling anybody to do, walk it out. Be that creative vessel in your environment that you've been placed in. And then become who it is that he is calling you to be to love on those around you. Because if you just keep to yourself, you're going to miss out on the blessing. Okay, let's go back to the word. Okay. So here's another factor. People could say, oh, I can't talk to anybody in public. Yes, you can. If you're a Christian, God did not, God did not bring you to the saving knowledge of Christ. So you could be like Mary Poppins, tromping along like everything is perfect and just focus on yourself. That is not why God saved you. That is not why you came to the saving knowledge of Christ, is to just do you and walk out you. Okay? So you can't say, oh, I could never share like this person. Or I'm not like that. Exactly. You're not that person. God is not going to call you to share like somebody else. God is not going to call you to say what other people say. But God is going to speak to you in the walls of your mind in a way that aligns up with how he's created you to be. All you have to do is yield, whatever that may look like. It could be opening the door for a grandma. It could be throwing somebody a compliment. And the word Jesus isn't even in there. It's just throwing them a compliment, encouraging other people. Okay, so now we're going to go back to Corinthians. So think of this. Jesus, there's a verse that says, For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame laid down his life to the point of death. It says that daily we must pick up our crosses and follow him. Okay, so let's think of what does that look like, picking up our crosses. It's not just doing the things that make me feel warm and fuzzy and make me feel comfortable and make me feel good. Okay, so here's the verse that I like um, because I've always, uh, you know, my, my kids could testify to this. I was a drill sergeant mom, okay? And so to me, it wasn't about let's make sure they're comfortable in all the ways, but I had a calling from God to teach them to be respectful to the law, respectful to others and this, that, and the other, okay? Because then I would tell them, I have to answer to God. And I'm not going to let God say to me, Sean, why did you cave? Why did you give up? 
Why did you say, oh, well, you know, teens will just be teens? No, I couldn't do it because I have to answer to God. So all of us are going to have to give an account to God. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the word. So we are in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We're going to start at verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Mm -hmm. Run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run aim I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. No, I beat my body and make it a slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will, be, will not be disqualified for the prize. So let's break that down in normal, like, you know, just easier. Okay? So let's say as you're watching this or before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning or when you're driving in your car, the thought comes to you. I know I should give my life to the Lord, but I just can't. I know I should give my life to the Lord, but if I do, I'll have to give up. Da, 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 da. Or I really know that I should share Jesus with this person, but I can't. I really know I should do this. Oh, I just can't. Or I don't know enough. Or I'm not bold like that person. Or um, I could never do this. Or I don't have this. Or I don't have that. Or I don't have this. No. We were created in his image, in the creator. We were created in the image of the creator. Right now, I'm standing here in Tiger, Oregon, and I'm not falling off planet Earth because gravity says, Sean, stand up straight. Okay? I'm not gasping for air because the Lord says, I'm going to put oxygen throughout the Earth. I'm standing here. I don't have to tell myself to make my heart beat. I don't have to tell myself to make my eyes, you know, bad, right? I don't have to tell myself to make my lungs breathe. I, they, I was already created that way. So for us, how he's created us, the discomfort comes when we are wanting to walk out our own ways and our own wills. The first time you choose to yield, to allow his love to either come into your heart or up and through your being out of your mouth or through your being and out of your hand or through your being in your feet to walk in a direction that he calls you to do. As a human, you are filled with inexplicable joy. Like joy that you can't even contain it because you as a human just get to be present in the moment to watch the Holy Spirit inside of you reaching out to other men and women, mankind, to love on them. Okay, back to the word. Hmm. Here's another thought. If I was given the option I would have been raised in a Christian home. That is not the option I was given. Okay? So, regardless of where you came from, whether you were raised in this atmosphere, this atmosphere, or this atmosphere, A, the Lord's knocking on the door to your heart. Today is October the 13th of 2018. Okay? But God's word is timeless. It says, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides the soul and the spirit, the body, even the joint and the marrows. That's because we were created to love and to know him and have fellowship with him and be in this mental, intimate love affair with him. But if you're in an environment that is contrary to what you think you should be in, okay, somebody could be in an environment where people think, oh, she's interesting. She always talks about Jesus wherever she goes. Okay? Or you can be in an environment 
where you're raised around completely introverted people who the thought of ever saying or sharing anything, it would just never happen. So, or you could be in an environment where, I don't know, like Million Dollar Baby, the movie, okay? Regardless of the environment that, that you're in, you're still created in the image of the creator. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to read Psalms 139. 139. Psalms 139. Mm. If you're on your phone, you can go to Google. Psalms 139. Mm. Psalms 139. Mm -hmm. uh, while, we're, while we're looking at Psalms 139, mm. I'm going to give another commercial. <laughs> this is not the normal commercial you're going to hear. Okay. So in the Bible, there's 31 um, chapters in the book of Proverbs, okay? So pause there for a second. Go back to in Isaiah where it says, As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, declares the Lord, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's jump over to the book of Proverbs. In the book of Proverbs, there's 31 chapters. Well, let's think for a minute. The longest month has 31 days. Mm -hmm. So whatever day it is, you can pick the Proverbs of the day. Well, my children all grew up hearing, drop a log, read a Proverbs. Okay? Mm -hmm. We're all going to spend time in the bathroom. So you can, and that's one thing that's great about your phone. You can just pull it up on Google. Proverbs, whatever the day is. So today's the 13th. Read mm -hmm. Proverbs 13 before you go to bed tonight. Okay? So now Psalms 139. Mm -hmm. So if you're not in front of a Bible to read it, I want you to insert yourself in what I'm about to read. Mm -hmm. Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I arise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. Mm -hmm. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, oh Lord. You hem me in behind and before mm -hmm. you have laid your hand upon me such knowledge is too wonderful for me mm -hmm. too lofty for me to attain where can i go from your spirit mm -hmm. where can i flee from your presence if i go to the heavens you are there if i make my bed in the depths, you are there if i rise on the wings of the dawn if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. So God's thoughts that he has towards you are greater in number than the grains of sand. The word says, for your father knows what you have need of before you ask it. So if you were raised in an environment where your dad was not Ward Cleaver, I'm sorry.
If you were raised in an environment where you didn't have a stable mom and dad, I'm sorry. If you were raised in an environment where never to be discussed situations occurred, I'm sorry. But the Lord God Almighty is a perfect dad. He is so perfect. He is a perfect parent. So if any of these things have occurred in your life, mourn it. It is not intended for you to try to work it out yourself. Mourn it. Tell the Lord who created you, wow, that sucked. I, I hate that that happened. You, there's nothing you can share with the Lord that he's going to say, oh, myself. Can't believe they're saying that. Those things were not his will. That was not part of his plan. When you wept, he wept. When you cried, he cried. When you were angry, he was angry for injustices that have occurred. But the word says, today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. So, Father, in the mighty, most powerful name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that that knock on the door to humans' hearts would come even stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, Lord God. I ask, Lord God, that if people are on the roads, Lord God, that you would just invade the spaces of, of their cars, Lord God. Mm. I ask, Lord God, for people in showers, Lord, that they would be overwhelmed by your love, Lord God. Mm. I ask, Lord God, that as people go to lay their head on their pillow tonight, Lord, that they would be overwhelmed by your love, Lord mm. God. Father, let, let mankind be overwhelmed by your love, Lord God. Overwhelm your people by your love, Lord God. Lord, let them just walk around and tangibly feel your presence. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with a verse. It's in Romans chapter 8. While we're looking up Romans after uh, chapter 8, I'm going to sing a song. I will come and bow down at your feet, Lord Jesus. In your presence is fullness of joy. There is nothing, there is no one who compares. With you, I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. So Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall troubles or hardships or persecutions or famine or nakedness or danger or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, 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 no. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. There's another song. <laughs> My friend thinks in songs. Nothing shall separate us from the wonderful love of God. Nothing shall separate us from the wonderful love of God. And then I think it's something like shall persecution or this or this or this. No, nothing shall separate us from the wonderful love of God. People, 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 yield to be the vessel now in your community. That's it. Amen.